There is no such thing as long-term booking anymore. It's all week to week, or at least according to Tony Khan. But is Tony Khan out of his goddamn mind? I think it's time we take Tony Khan to wrestling with the homies court. This is wrestling with the homies. Today, we are doing the trial of Tony Ronaldo Khan. Same OG. There we go. It's your boy Quan the Don. And if you don't say that Don, you ain't saying it, right? And I am so proud that Cooley finally did it. He finally got his cue and he finally called me the same OG. What what is it? The meth? (laughs) (laughs) Come on, what is the braids? And y'all know who I'm with. My BFF. My man's. My boy. The coolest coolest. man in the world. Jay Cooley Cooley. The coolest. Burr. What's going on, y'all? I mean, you know, it's it's another day. I don't know if Tony Khan's middle name is Ronaldo. I gave him that name. It's just something that I called him. I'm sorry if it's not. You know, I got a lot of... I worry about Tony Khan, man. <laughs> I mean, look, he Rose said, a maniac. no long... We done with long term. We done with long term. This is all short term, baby. We doing day by day. What did, what did Blueface say? Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Yeah, all right. All right before Tony. we get into the trial of Tony Ronaldo Khan Cooley, it looks like you was right, dog. It looks like you was right. That Vince to- McMahon doc is this. out. He told us. He told us. And, I and have, we haven't seen them. it yet. It's, it's early. It's 8 a.m. We have not seen it yet. So I'm just putting that out there. We will be talking about it tomorrow. But uh, it's looking like it's a hit piece. They cooking that boy. Yeah, that statement. He was trying to put out, he was trying to buy that series. Yeah, it didn't work, bro. You are the post TKO. You have no juice, bro. You have no juice. Hey, All the fruit is gone, man. They got it's a rap, him. man. They got it's a rap him. For Vince. Vince McMahon is he got got. They got him. Yeah, man. You know what you know what Vince McMahon is for real? You know what Vince McMahon is? He a freaky ass booker better stay your ass inside. Freaky ass freaky booker, ass he booker, booker he is. Freaky ass mm. booker here. That was pretty good. I, 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 uh, I thought you was gonna say something serious right there. You got me. Good me? Job. Me serious? Are you fight the plane? Good they play, game, man. They got him. They got his ass. He a sixty nine yeah, guy. Keep keep your ch- children. Keep your wives. Keep everybody away from Vince McMahon. Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, they, but they about to skate though. I don't know. We're going to see. I, I still think it's going to be some pushback against WWE, but I guess we'll find out. We'll deep dive into that tomorrow on tomorrow's episode because we did not watch it yet. Again, it is very early in the morning. We just woke up about an hour ago. I can't I watch six up. episodes in an hour. <laughs> I was hell late. But yeah, we're going to get there. We're going to get there, man. Six episodes. Right. Oh, they dropped six They dropped all the episodes too? I they think dropped they, all they might six. have dropped all oh, of them. Oh, wow. They dropped all six. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's let's. Well, how are we gonna handle this? Are we gonna watch them you. all? Are we gonna watch oh, one at a time? What you want to? What y'all want to do? It depends on y'all. We got. I might. I group, might power through all of them today. Just get it weird in the combo. <laughs> yeah. I wish. I wish I can. You know, do it all today. But you know, I got work, so I'm. I'm in and out. But I can. Cool, I can do said, probably work. a couple. I can do a do couple. Do a couple. Episodes. Do a couple. I'll do I'm all sure. all of them, and then we can just go from there. See how the conversation goes. Oh, I'm sure it'll be fun. Oh, so you're gonna watch? I'm gonna watch all of them. I'm. That boy is sick. <laughs> well, I said I have no time for y'all and y'all podcast games. I'm watching it all today. Right. And I've been watching Fargo. Do. I don't know if y'all ever seen the show Fargo on FX, but it's really good. No, I started no, Fargo watching Fargo is it. amazing. It's incredible. Yeah. I've never. What is it about a plane? Are you serious? It's a, I, it's a on, Minnesota thing. Have you seen the movie? <laughs> yes. You got to watch the movie Frans first. McDormand? Cooley. Yes. Then go oh, watch yeah, the never, show. Yeah, it's amazing. It's It's basically... Before we get back to wrestling, it's basically just uh, abstract storytelling. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. it's abstract linear storytelling is what it is. So the story is kind of random, but it's great. <laughs> yes, yes. And they got some in, wild man. Minnesota accents. They'd be like, "No, hey, hon." Yeah, it's How it's a you? slice of life of, of of a place you didn't know existed. Right, like, but it's it's really, it's really good, good though. Man. I'm I'm on season two, and I was gonna power through season two, but you know this Vince McMahon doc is out, so I gotta go watch that. Obviously, so Fargo yeah. gonna have to take a back seat. But shout out to hey, if you haven't watched Fargo, hey, this is not an ad, but go watch that. It's good. It's good. I'll check it out. But anyway, Cooley, Cooley. Before we get to the trial of Tony Khan and his freaky booking ways. I got to bring it up. We we mentioned it yesterday. I had a prediction, and it looks like I was right. Nobody watched Raw right oh. now. Uh, bro, SmackDown and Raw's numbers are way, way down. Matter of fact, 
it was one of the least watched Raws of all time. Of all time? Jay Uso winning the title was one of the least watched Raws of all time. And I'm only bringing this up because we do it when AEW has these terrible rated shows. So I got to keep the same energy. We got to bring it up when it happens to Raw. Why is nobody watching WWE right now? Like, what is it? Can we really just blame football? Is it all on football or is just the show not interesting enough? What's um, happening? Being that the Super Bowl is one of the biggest events of all time and that correlates to football. Yeah, we can blame it on football. What else is what, like, what else is going on? <laughs> what else is going So that means we can sneak Braun the title back for next week. And yeah, and nobody's going to watch regular. it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody will know. Wait, I didn't know SmackDown was down too. Bro, SmackDown on USA is doing 1.4 mil, which is that's that's a lot of people, granted, but when they were on Fox, they were doing 2.3, 2.4 million. So, that's a big fall off. Dang, that's crazy. But they crazy. were also going against college football, which again, the the college football game on Fox did 4 million against USA. So, it's it, look, it looks like football is destroying pro wrestling. And I really want to know, is it just the product that we're not resonating with? Or is it just we watching football? I, I wholeheartedly think it's just people just watching football, man. It's been gone, what, eight, seven months? And people oh, want wow. they parlays and they want that money. They got gambling Everybody's gambling. That's what, that's what the problem is. Everybody's gambling. So we, we trying to Everybody's watch these gambling. games for the parlays and see if our parlays hit so we can win our money. So wrestling just got to take a back seat. Because ain't no parlays yeah, in wrestling. It's predetermined. You can't Pretty bet much. on something that's predetermined. If you do, well, I don't know. Your mind. You can bet on AEW, apparently. You know so why they moved SmackDown from Thursday originally. I, Ooh, I don't. I, I forgot. Don't, but they need Could to go back to it with football because you know football did add Thursdays. Thursday night football. You Ooh, and they are probably. going to add Friday next year. Oh damn! They're going back to Friday. The NFL is doing Fridays too next year. They're supposed oh, to. Oh yes. It's ugly for WWE. They gonna have oh, yeah, to Oh, yeah, SmackDown going back to Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> they going to Wednesday shit. Damn, you know what, though? I'm going to be honest with you, bro. Because as much as a, a, a big wrestling fan that I am, we have a whole ass wrestling podcast. So y'all know I love this wrestling shit. When it's a good game on on Monday nights, I'm not watching Raw. Like, I'm watching football, and then I'll circle back to Raw afterwards. I think the way that we, we watch wrestling has just kind of changed over the years. Wrestling doesn't seem like an urgent watch, to me at least. Now, if it's WrestleMania, SummerSlam, or a PLE, or even an AEW pay-per-view, I'll watch that over football. But if it's just a regular show where things yeah. are happening, football seems more urgent because when I watch football, it's all about the result of the game. I'm watching that game to see who wins. If I find out who won over on wrestling, it's fine. I still want to watch the nuances of the show. I still want to see the storylines develop and everything. I don't really care about the result of the matches. So because of that, wrestling doesn't seem urgent. I can watch it on a replay. But football, basketball, I got to watch those things live. I'm not going back to watch a Laker game if I know the end result already. If I know the Lakers lost the game, I don't have to go watch and see how they lost. But if I know Jay Uso won the championship, I can go, watch, go back and watch that and see how the match went. So I, I think wrestling just isn't urgent right now. Sports are more urgent than pro wrestling. I'm sorry. So this is why we don't think Michael Jordan is the GOAT, because we never went back and watched his footage, because there's no <laughs> sense of urgency. So uh, shout out to LeBron. Know, <laughs> I've seen some clips of Michael Jordan. He didn't look like he was all y'all say he is. Now, maybe this is just me be showing my age. Maybe E can attest to that. But <laughs> Oh, well, man. I'll I, say this. There is a new theory out because they're uh, so apparently there there were some statisticians who came out and said back in the nineties yep. they used to cook the books. I right. Saw that. Jordan I saw it. would he would have he would really have three steals, but they would just say six. Right. Wow. <laughs> so now people are going back to rewatch the games. And they finding out. And they finding out that yeah. some of these stats aren't actually correct. Michael Jordan because is a product of marketing, the internet, right? You, it was all just what you right. They had to write the stats on a paper and then turn it in. Yeah. So there was no checks and balances of, you know, like you just assumed that they were being honest. But right. then you have to think about, but if they're home, right, and they're hired by the comp, they're hired by the team, and the team needs the star mm -hmm. to look like a star. Well, add a stealer there. Exactly. Add, a, well, add a block That's here. Wild. They said Michael Jordan got. <laughs> Three, four blocks in a game once when it was only two it was blocks like in the game. He Dang. didn't even have none, but had four at the end of the Insane. night. It's safe. Michael Jordan is a product of marketing. Bro, now, was he good? Of course he was good. We're not going to say he was bad. He was a good player. But 
he's a product of genius marketing. I'm sorry. And All I still LeBron don't think Will Chamberlain bro. scored 100 That's points. That's all I'm going to say. There's no fake LeBron stats. Yeah, exactly. LeBron, is, <laughs> LeBron is nuts, bro. That's, I saw it. I, I saw it with my own two eyes, bro. I seen we are, we've seen every game that LeBron has ever had since the 11th grade. Right. right. <laughs> them, them books weren't cooked, bro. I don't know. But Michael Jordan is looking weird. Will Chamberlain, I don't think he ever scored 100 points. Ain't no footage. I just see him holding up a piece of paper with 100 on it. Nah, I ain't buying into none of that. It's all propaganda, yeah, baby. <laughs> Yeah, man, I don't, I don't believe none They're of that. Trying to rewrite I, history like Vince McMahon with his documentaries. I seen a two. I seen a one-legged uh, dinosaur, bro, on footage in the 1800s. <laughs> no, Will <laughs> Chamberlain footage though. Like, what's going on, bro? That shit don't exist. It don't exist, bro. bro. I done seen Bigfoot walking through the woods in HD, but I ain't seen no footage of Will Chamberlain scoring a hundred. Nah, Damn, dog. Man. Dang. What did, uh, what did Drake say? Nah, 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 not this time. You following through. <laughs> he really said that and then got cooked. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> the the regret. Mm. Anyway, we we, we kind of wilding. It's early in the episode. We, we only had 11 minutes and we already kind of just off the rails. But you see, these th this type of conversation that just goes off the rails and just lands wherever it lands, that's what happens when you don't over plan. And that's Tony Khan's point with his short-term booking. He don't mm. overplan. So he can take advantage of the organic moments. You dig? You like how I brought that back, right? Get it? <laughs> Bring it back. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm defending Tony Khan today. I know that we were making fun of it because n n saying that long-term booking no longer exists is kind of crazy. But at the same time, you know, I got to be devil's advocate, and I love Tony Khan, so I'm going to shoot him a little bell on this. Oh, I got to hear this. Yeah, yeah. So... Obviously, we are taking Tony Khan to wrestling with the homies court. Silence in the court. Tony Khan believes that there is no longer long-term book booking, and it's all week to week. Is Tony Khan out of his goddamn mind? Is Tony Khan smoking that M-E-T-H-O-D, man? Or is Tony Khan cooking? Is he cooking? Now, first off, we got to determine, de 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 define Look, I can't even get that word out. We got to define what long-term booking is. I feel like a lot of people have a misconception what long-term booking is. They think long-term booking is just taking a story and stretching it out for a whole year. That's not what long-term booking is. An, an example of long-term booking would be me having a WrestleMania card matches one through matches 12, or however many matches there is at WrestleMania. Having match one and match tw through match 12 planned a year in advance. And then mapping out 12 months of TV to get from point A to point B. That's what long-term booking is. And Tony Khan is saying, we don't do that over here in AEW. We do everything week to week. And honestly, I got to be honest, dog. I kind of feel him. I kind of feel Tony Khan. I you really are smoking meth. <laughs> okay, so look, here's the thing. Lots of it. Lots of it. <laughs> What? Why? Why am I smoking meth? Why? Bro, you grew up on long term, man. We've been in long term since middle school. Like, okay, but look, the thing. And I'm about, gonna let you know why you smoking meth. Okay, but I want you to get Let me get let me get the rocks rock off. Let me get my rocks off and, and defend my boy Tony. Tony, you see, I got your back. They can never claim that we hate AEW over here because I be defending my ass off for Tony, dog. So here's the thing: when you over plan, it could be bad. It could be bad. For example. On this podcast, I hate the pod about podcasting because that's kind of weird. But in the very beginning, when I was very new to this, we was all very new to this. We didn't really know what we was doing. We still kind of new to this and figuring it out. But in the very beginning, when we really didn't know what we was doing, we definitely overplanned a bit. And when I say we overplanned, we we kind of had an idea of everything that we were <laughs> going to say before we went live. So what would happen is when we would go live, whenever the conversation would organically go somewhere. We would go off on a side tangent. It would get entertaining. We would banter back and forth. I would immediately cut that off because I was so married to the structure of the show and what I already had planned that I didn't make room for those organic moments. And those organic moments are important. And that same thing happens in pro wrestling. Like right now in WWE, we are witnessing it because there was obviously a long-term plan in place for Chad Gable to break away from the Alpha Academy and group up with the Creed brothers to form what are they called? The American males or something? American ma made. American made. American made. That was obviously the long-term plan. While fulfilling that plan, what happened was Otis got over. The crowd got behind Otis to the point where now the crowd wants to see Otis go over Chad Gable. 
But you know what Triple H did with Otis? Not a damn thing because Otis wasn't in the long-term plans. So the thing that happened organically got stepped on because Triple H just had no room for it. He stuck to what he had planned long-term. That hurts the product at the end because when something organic goes and gets over you got to run with the organic hand man you can't just stick to the plan every single time so yes i think short-term booking could be good taking it by day by day could be good obviously you got to have a level of planning that goes into that but still i think taking it day by day is not the worst thing in the world cool Do I you sound insane? are smoking <laughs> meth <laughs> first of all tony khan is a madman and let me give you an example on why taking it week by week is so... It just don't make sense. I've told you this before. I'm watching AEW. <laughs> I'm like, okay, da Brian Danielson has a match coming up. Out of nowhere, that match was taken away. He's injured out of nowhere. So his whole opponent changes. And that was Dom Darby Allen versus John Moxley. And supposedly Brian Danielson is injured. But he has a match with Nigel. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. So I was confused. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> Oh, an example of short-term booking, a week to week. Yeah. It just don't make sense. So it's like if you're not doing long-term and you're just doing it day by day, you're just doing drugs. And that's the problem with short-term booking. When you, when you book too much for short-term and you don't really have a long-term plan at all, then your show kind of gets incoherent because we see that a lot with AEW. A lot of things happen at AEW that don't make sense. Like Cooley brought up, the Darby Allen, John Moxley, and Brian Danielson situation. Like, why is Brian Danielson wrestling Nigel McGuinness, but he can't wrestle Darby? It doesn't make sense. But that's Tony Khan for you. Tony Khan, but, he didn't have a long-term plan there. He's just doing shit day by day. But also, it kind of makes sense because he doesn't do storylines. So without storylines, can you do it week by week? Can you do See, it day by day? Because the, the devil so storyline was supposed to be long-term, right? Oh, and now we talking, and now we talking. So <laughs> when you scared. think about the he's devil story, <laughs> Tony Khan probably scared, man. <laughs> so when you think about the devil storyline and how that played out, can you blame him for getting away from long term storytelling? Because the devil storyline was something that he clearly had long term plans for. It went to all in. They had the match that should have been the end, but it kept going because he had a, a greater story to tell on the back end, right? And then Adam Cole breaks his goddamn ankle and gets hurt. So all that long-term planning went to nothing. So now it's like, okay, what do I do? So I pivot. I add this person. I add this person. And before you know it, the devil reveal, instead of just being Adam Cole, like it was probably originally going to be, is Wardlow and Roderick Strong and this random ROH tag. It's like, what? What did this storyline become, dog? And this is all because Tony Khan was trying to long-term book. It bit him in the ass. It went bad. So I so can't blame him for booking short-term. So he's a giver-upper. Pretty much. Like, do <laughs> so, another story. You did it once. Do it again. Like, come on, bro. Obviously, Tony Khan isn't good with GPS. Obviously. <laughs> Triple H said it best. What did he say about GPS? He said long-term uh, booking is basically like GPS. It keep rerouting you, as, but things yeah. will happen, you know. And, um, you know, the, the, you have a destination, and it can change along the way. But the, the, the most important thing about it is the target. So, yeah, Tony Khan isn't uh, good with GPS uh, at the end of the damn, day. That was beautifully said. Ch ch check out Triple H cooking, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> cooking. Like, come on, Tony. Come and on, I, and I think that's what the right answer is for all of this. Like, I know we plan around, but I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. Like, you do got to book day to day in a sense, but also you got to have a long term plan in mind. And you, you can't be married to the long term plan. though. No. you got to pivot when the pivot calls for it. Because, like, if I got L.A. Knight on my roster and I have no long term plan on him, but then L.A. Knight turns into a megastar overnight and all the fans are wanting him. I can't leave him off of WrestleMania because that's what happened with L.A. Knight in WWE. They left him off WrestleMania. They did. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't do that if he gets hot. You got to – You gotta. I know the GPS and the destination and all that. That's cute. That's beautiful. I love it. But you got to hit that corner sometimes. You know what I'm saying? And WWE has shown <laughs> a willingness to do that, granted, because uh, we know the destination for WrestleMania was The Rock versus Roman Reigns. But – Cody yeah, got over. Right. The fans chose Cody. So WWE showed the willingness to change plans and, you know, go a different route. Same thing Bro. with Brian Danielson. <laughs> it was supposed to be Batista in that main event, but, yeah. you know, Brian Danielson got over. WWE showed the willingness to divert from that plan, turn the corner, and run with Brian Danielson. So 
yes, plan, plan long term for sure. But don't be afraid to divert from that plan if something else happens organically. You can't run from the organics. You can't. The organic moments is what makes pro wrestling pro wrestling, to me at least. Yeah, for sure. It can't all just be what's planned, bro. We was at WrestleMania. Uh, we was at WrestleMania 39, man. And we seen all these posters, and we see LA Knight on the posters. Bro was not even on the show. I'm like, that's crazy, bro. They were just teasing fans, man. They just, it's bro, you know. <laughs> at one point, we thought LA Knight was about to be the special guest, and then Bobby Lashley <laughs> popped this boring ass up there. And shout out to Bobby Lashley. I'm sorry, I love you. Shout out to you, you bald and you uh, black. So I love man. you. <laughs> but Bobby Lashley popped up. It's like, bro, this ain't who we wanted. <laughs> we out here yeah. chanting yeah in LA Knight, and Bobby Lashley walks out. But that was an example of Triple H sticking to the plan. LA Knight got hot out of nowhere. It was no plan for, for him to do anything more than what he was doing. So he got left off the show. You can't do that. You can't yeah, do that. That's not how the game is played. You can't do that. You can't do that. Like, like Avon said <laughs> on the wire. You can't You got to let the organic thing go, man. Like, like at the beginning of this podcast, bro, we had a whole conversation about Fargo. You think we planned for that? No. But it happened, and we let it happen. It was a fun conversation. Okay. That's what you got to do, dog. So don't you, you gotta worry. Do. Don't, don't you worry. worry. So is this another is this another situation of wrestling with the homies feeling like Tony Khan is again dropping the ball? No. Like, uh, Cooley. <laughs> yeah. Cooley, maybe. Uh, yeah. Tony Khan I, is dropping the ball. He's literally first of all, well, you, I mean, you just Huh? Go ahead, go ahead. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> <I was gonna laughs> say, <laughs> he said. Huh? <laughs> no, I'm saying, first of all, you just put out reports about like a few weeks ago saying that you're going to get into your storyline back. So how yeah. can you get into a storyline back when you're taking it week by week? It just don't make sense to me because when you're writing out a story, it's for the long term. So yeah. are we doing one week stories or what are we doing? Are we doing so a docu series? Like, We're not doing again, a movie? Tony Khan is being confusing just like the AEW shows. Right, <laughs> just like how the shows are. Right, so it's just a transcendence of his. Like that's just who he is, right? He's a confusing guy, right? Because I, I guess, understand yeah. the short term book, like that can be fun, but it's not fun if you're doing if you're doing the same. He's doing the same short term structure every week. Yeah, like what's, and, and it's not sustainable. What's short term for and spontaneous about that three six man tag team? Every, oh, I'm tired. Every of week, Cassidy, like every not, week. What's, what are we getting? Like, there's no spontaneity in it in, in real life. Like, yeah, right? and that's the problem. That's He's the just problem. shuffling people around the same matches. <laughs> he just I mean, hitting square I mean, on the control and just hitting random and just letting it go. I don't know, man. This is this is why we have TA, TNA on the side, man. We can, you know. Bro, Cooley, <laughs> the, Cooley just is the TNA stand now, bro. Look at this man, bro. He just... He, he want to shoehorn TNA into every conversation. Maybe we need to let's have a go. TNA episode next week. Let's let's do a cool. TNA episode. Cooley Why people should be watching TNA. Cooley the guy that goes to Japan for vacation for a weekend, and now he come back texting in Japanese. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Hey, I would do yeah, that, too. Be on the in Japanese. You like, bro. You hey, listen, real, man. Bro. Relax. I, I, went to Puerto, I went to Puerto Rico last year, man. I came back with Duolingo, and I was, you know, <laughs> talking to people in Spanish and everything. <laughs> He came back thinking he was Damien Priest. I'm like, damn, bro. What's oh, God, going on? Man. Puerto Rico changed my life, bro. Now I understand, right. Damien. <clears throat> right. But I think that's – so that's the problem with the short-term booking, bro. you got to have some type of long-term plan in the back because if you don't, then your TV just can become incoherent. It's just like babbling every single week for the sake of babbling. Like these, these three-man trios, tag team matches every week, you know that the, the – the, that that day doesn't start with Tony Khan with that match already in his mind. You know he gets to the taping and it's just like, all right, we need a match here. Let's do Roderick Strong and these two versus Orange Cassidy and those two, and then that's just the match that we got that so, night. No story, no nothing, just wrestling. <laughs> so if he's doing that, does that mean the wrestlers really don't have time to plan like their spots and stuff? So they just going off a of fly, pretty much. And now you see why the matches look how they look. <laughs> <laughs> And now you see why yeah. dudes are kicking out of super kicks and shooting star presses and Canadian destroyers because they go over all this shit probably two hours before the show starts. That's crazy. And then think about think about that in regards to you might be in the ring and change your mind, right? Right. You just came up with this, right? Right. So like you super kick me and I'm just like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> For real, right? Like because we just talked about this, so I'm. If it's not locked in, I might have a different. You know what? I don't feel like doing that today. 
I'm going to go kick out of this. <laughs> you can't say anything. Hey, that's crazy, <laughs> man. Stuff like this is the reason why CM Punk and Hangman went out there, and Hangman just started shooting on CM Punk, just saying things that weren't scripted because it's all short term. <laughs> That's wild, man. Because that's not happening if Triple H is running the show. That's only happening on a Tony Khan led show. Let's just be real. I don't know, man. Yeah. I wanted to defend that's Tony Khan. Tony, that's Tony Ronaldo Khan. <laughs> Tony Jebediah Khan. I wanted to defend you so bad. But I, I don't like know. Tony. It's looking bad, bro. It's looking bad. This is wrestling with the homies' like, court. I feel like Tony Khan is in his meetings going, You get it? Y'all get it, right? Yeah, you got it. Go do like... the so you, then you. You, then. Y'all got it, right? Okay, cool. <laughs> right. yeah, so got, we all agree got some that yes man. <laughs> he got a lot of yes men. Let's yeah, yes man. Christopher like... Daniels is the number one. <laughs> so we all agree that long term booking is absolutely needed, right? For a yes. company to survive. Yes. <laughs> on yes. some level. Like on some on level. Some I, level. I, I understand level. trying to be different and finding a mix that works, but to go all the way to opposite just doesn't make sense, right? Like you don't think you don't think wrestling tried that? You don't think that <laughs> WWE has been on top for 40 years because because they know what works and they're just doing right. it wrong. That's just obtuse, man. Right. But there are yeah. moments when long-term booking does get annoying. Because I remember when the match, John Cena versus CM, or what is it? John Cena versus The Rock, right? They, it was announced a year ahead of WrestleMania. Like a whole yeah, yeah, year yeah. ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that? 2015, 2014? Yeah. Well, so now yeah, we yeah. had a whole year of TV and we already <laughs> knew what the end goal was because the match was announced. So that kind of got annoying because anything yeah. that Cena was doing, we already knew that Cena was going to overcome it because he was getting to the Rock at Mania anyway. So it, it, it got annoying. I don't know. Long-term booking could be a gift and a curse, but I do well, think. Yeah, if you tell everybody, like <laughs> if you tell everybody, then yeah, it's not cool. Like it's supposed right. to be an internal document, bro. <laughs> right. Like right now, we know The Rock and Cody Rhodes is the main event of WrestleMania. I, and I'm sorry if I'm spoiling for people. It's the it's the main event, bro. It's the it's the main event. We we a hey, dock it right Quan now. I'm being them dirt get, sheets, man. Doc, I'm being <laughs> them dirt sheets. Dock it right now. Once we get to that moment, just remember who told you first. It's Cody and The Rock, and then probably Solo versus I mean Jacob versus Roman. I don't know. I don't know what Roman is doing, but it's definitely The Rock and Cody. But yeah, it sounds like we all agree that long-term booking is somewhat needed, and there is more negatives to positives than short-term booking. So, cue up the court music. In the case of Tony, in the court. The case of Tony Ronaldo Khan, Tony Jebediah Khan, you are guilty. You are guilty of smoking that M E T H O D. Man, you are smoking. Meth. Tony Khan, man. Hire some writers. <laughs> Please. Hire some writers who know how to write a real story, a coherent story that goes long, okay? Do that. Do that for me. We can't just book it all week to week. Yeah, hit us up, bro. We got a, we have ideas. We got ideas. I'm sure we could I'm sure we could get out one good episode. I, I believe we <laughs> could get chaotic. out one good episode. At least one. Now, though. you know, and it I could do a. I, I'm for sure. No, I could do a collision. <laughs> right. Because ain't nobody watching it anyway. So <laughs> nobody watching. Right. We getting the same amount of views. So I'm pretty <laughs> sure we Man. can handle that. <laughs> Jeez. But until then, Tony Khan, enjoy your time in wrestling with the homies. Jail, man. We got we got bread and water for you. Okay. We're gonna be serving you <laughs> every 12 hours. <laughs> we really just put Tony Khan in prison. Yeah. You know who's going in prison tomorrow? <laughs> Miss McMahon Vince because McMahon. he is a freaky ass booker. Better stay your ass inside. Freaky ass booker. He is 69. God. Hey, uh, hey, Vince. hey, hey. Run for your uh, life. Vince. I can't believe Vince, man. I can't believe it. I've been seeing clips on, on X app and it's bad. Cooley was right. Cooley, Cooley was talking his shit before bro, we came on the podcast. He's being modest right now, but he was. He was it's he my was Virgo instincts, test. bro. We Virgos. Me and Vince Virgos, man. It's my Virgo instinct. I seen it. I seen it. He was trying I to see that. Trying to spread yeah. that bread, man. Me and E thought that it was going to be propaganda. We thought they was going to take it easy on Vince, and it was just going to be WWE and Netflix, you know, softballing nah, it. I've been hey. worn down by the establishment, <laughs> by the establishment. I thought he had more control, apparently. Hey, bro. Man, I said it. The age of the white man is coming to an end, bro. Like, it's, it's getting tough. <laughs> getting bad. It's getting yeah, man. Bad. Clyde Davis, you next. <laughs> Whoa, allegedly. 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 Relax. <laughs> Cooley trying to get us taken off air. You already got one. You already got one episode, Shell. 
I don't give up. No, it's good. Habitual, <laughs> man. He, he habitual. Yeah, habitual ruler, offender. <laughs> For real. <laughs> Woo! Rick anyway, Flair, do we got yeah. any games today, man? We are wilding today. Yes. I love these type of shows where we just we go crazy. Do. Yes, we do. In honor. Hold on. Let me play. Let me, let me get the music on. Let's get that music on. Let's get that music. Look, we're doing a thing over here now. Y'all see that? Hey. There we go. Ooh, I like that. All right. So Why are we in dancing honor to it? <laughs> of long term and short term storytelling, we are going to play short play or long game. I am going to go over some some interesting storylines and we can discuss should they have gone longer or should we have made this a short term situation. So for instance, number one, Kofi Kingston's WWE Championship run 2019. Obviously, it was a pivot. Right? Obviously, it was a short-term idea, and yeah. they did it and let it go. Yeah. But could this storyline have played out? Mm. Could, and what could have happened? I'm not going to lie to you. Uh -oh. And I love Kofi Kingston. I love Kofi, Kofi Kingston with my whole heart. Kofi, New Day, I love y'all. This shouldn't have went as long as it did, to be honest. Like, Kofi Kingston only won yeah, that championship so. because we <laughs> needed some. He got over. Yeah. He got over. The fans chose him, so we had to pivot at WrestleMania and give him that title win. But after that, it was nothing to do. We didn't really need it. And Brian Danielson was cooking. That was that was when Brian Danielson was at the height of his whole vegan hill run, and it was great. We could have kept that longer. I wanted to see that championship reign last longer. So, no, the Kofi Kingston thing. It ended when it needed to. It shouldn't have been a squash to Brock, but it ended when it needed to. I'm sorry. And I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna have to agree with Quan, man. Um, wow, I did not think you would agree. Yeah, Holy yeah, shit. I did. I just didn't like the squash. I, I felt like Kofi could have. Uh, he could have went out better, you know. Um, but 180 days, nothing really happened. Um, and I feel like that they gave him the title because we still was in that era of complaining about there's no more, there's no black champions, you know. Yeah. So they just. It, here, damn, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, yo, in that era, Vince was giving us a lot of black stuff. Like, did you, know, yeah. you ever think about that? Like, he was giving us the first black WrestleMania main event with women. Yeah, he was giving so us, hey, well, Vince was trying to pander <laughs> to us at one point. He was because we we kept we kept asking for it, but um, I don't know. I, I you know, it ended when it needed to, but yeah, I just hated the squash. That's the only thing. But yeah, yeah. we didn't need a squash. All right, I like this music kind of number. Two, Daniel Bryan's Yes Movement 2014. Did WWE drag out the Yes Movement storyline to a perfect climax at WrestleMania? Or could they have shortened it for a quicker payoff? Mm -mm. Yeah, no, nah, I got to go with, mm -mm. with option A. I think, I, I, me personally, I think that that WrestleMania climax was everything. Yes. The, the story played out exactly how it needed to. Now, I hate what happened after because obviously he started dealing with concussions and then he had to retire. So we never got the real payoff to any of that. But that WrestleMania payoff was beautiful. It was glorious. It's one of my favorite moments in wrestling history. So, yes, it happened exactly yes. how it needed to happen. That whole time was that whole time was cinema. What the kids say? Cinema. 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 That Not was, the it Cody was, Rose and Roman <laughs> at a football field cinema. <laughs> Not that kind of cinema. But yeah, uh, that that was that was a, a great great time in um in wrestling, and it's a shame that you know the things that happened to him after. And hopefully, we can see him back, and we can get that that thing back moving. Yeah, it's you know? over. Mm, yeah, it's he ain't over. never coming <laughs> home, bro. Let's just accept it, bro. He he in AEW forever. Yeah. Uh, it's over, bro. Damn, it's over. bro. All right. Seth Rollins turning on the Shield in 2014 was the timing of Seth's betrayal of the Shield perfectly placed, or could WWE have stretched the storyline longer for more emotional impact? Mmm, that's a tough one. I think they should have stretched it. Yeah, I think they should have stretched it. I think it was too fast. Uh, the Shield, you know, I still love the Shield together, man. We all, we I all did, even though you know everybody, you know, they were heels or whatever. But um, I feel like they could have stretched it, and it probably would have made Roman Reigns transition more easier. Mm -hmm. But you know, being that they broken up uh, so fast, you know, 
it splurged everything. Everything was spiral, but yeah, they should have stretched it out for sure. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that too. Like, I and maybe I'm just misremembering because it was it was a minute ago. It was 2014, but ten years. I don't even remember a build up to that moment. I rem I remember just being shocked because it came out of nowhere. They were all in the ring one day, and then Seth Rollins just picked up a chair and hit Roman Reigns, and I was just like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> this is happen <laughs> Why is this happening already? So they could have yeah. definitely stretched that, made it a little more dramatic, and had Seth turn on him in a way that mattered more than just a chair shot. Maybe cost him a title or something. I don't know. It could have it could have been stretched out longer. They they went with the short term thing. Tony Khan booking. Did Tony Khan book that? Probably. Was it you, Tony? Probably. All right. Last one. CM Punk's pipe bomb in 2011. Uh, Was damn. CM Punk's infamous pipe bomb promo a subsequent title and subsequent title win a brilliant short term storyline or? Could WWE have dragged the story out longer for an even bigger payoff? Mm. So I think the title win was perfect. Perfect. Happened exactly how it needed to. The problem was, because it was a pivot, they didn't have a long-term plan in place for that title win. So then we got CM Punk feuding with Kevin Nash. It was kind of weird. Kevin Nash told him to go hit the, hit the gym and get a clue. I don't know why Kevin Nash was on TV at that time, because he was already washed. So if we would have planned that better long term, then the payoff could have been better. But it definitely happened when it needed to, because CM Punk was that guy. Uh, whatever Quan said, I'm agree with because <laughs> during this time I was in the streets. I wasn't watching WWE, baby. Damn, I was in the streets. Damn. But, but when the pipe bomb happened, I did have to tune in because I'm like, whoa, somebody went off on on, on, on Vince like that. <laughs> oh, it was CM Punk. Oh, okay. Okay, and it was fire, man. I'm like, yo, this is wild. What has wrestling come to, man? This is this is crazy. So I thought it was real. I thought yeah. it, was, it was on World Star Hip Hop. It was yeah. on World Star, <laughs> and this was when World Star was just X-rated videos and rap. <laughs> they World posted Star the Hines. pipe bomb. Yeah, 2011 <laughs> World <laughs> Star was a <laughs> wild place. <laughs> yeah, bro. Same place. It was fights. Yeah, but I definitely wasn't in tune. I wasn't tapped in, man. Yeah, we we was outside them days. That's when me and you yeah. was running the streets. Yeah, I was. I was, I was still paying attention to wrestling though, like just on the side and on the low because I was low key embarrassed about wrestling. But yeah, man, I was. You know, we was running the streets. We was outside. We was at Drico yeah. House. We was in Santa Monica. <laughs> we was everywhere. Right. We was and <laughs> finally, bonus round. Predict. He said, "All right, predict future booking." So. How would you book Cody Rhodes' next WWE run? Should it be short-term, or should we go on a long-term journey with Cody Rhodes? Let's just be honest. Damn. Cool. You want that one? Yeah, because, you know, I am not Team Cody. Um, <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> Cody is a great champion. Uh, he's, he's great. I just feel like I want to see him without – bloodline involvement so yeah. without the bloodline involvement i want to see him go on a short term because if he can do that first then i can give him a long-term chance because we've seen roman do the short and we've seen roman do the long and he's excelled at both um and clearly right. he's going to always be mr important at the end of the day so uh definitely for the future i will book cody as a short term and see how how, how i go out without bloodline stuff you know Get his homelander on. Maybe a heel champion. Who knows? You know? Oh, God. He ain't never turning heel. I need y'all to <laughs> let that go. Cody Rhodes is too important to the landscape of wrestling and the kids to turn heel. Same reason John Cena never turned heel because he was making all those making wishes to dying children. That's the same reason Cody Rhodes is never, ever in life turning heel. The kids Man. love him. They buy his. He is selling more merch than NBA and NFL players. Go check Fanatics. He's in the top five. He's up there with Ronaldo and LeBron James. You cannot turn that hill. Because when Bro. you turn something like that hill, they stop selling merch. They stop making the company money. The kids That's aren't loving them anymore. They're not all making the ghosts retire. All the ghosts retired, so LeBron the only one left. So, of course, he got the edge off that. Y'all you know? don't hear this game music going? <laughs> oh, I'm <bad. laughs> I got mad. I got mad for a second. Don't turn Tony Rhodes Hill. Man, all right, I'm so trying look. to get this segment wrapped up, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I want to see Cody Rhodes face some real adversity. 
So his next, he should not have a next run. After this WWE title run, once it's done, I want to see Cody Rhodes go from the bottom to the top again. Have some real adversity. Because right now, Cody Rhodes has fake adversity. They pretend like his back is against the wall, but we all know what it is. We all know he's WWE's ace. We all know he's their new John Cena. Ain't no real adversity. So let's see him lose some matches. Let's see him out there losing to Austin Theory. Let's see him out there losing to Grayson Waller and Javon Evans and Trick Williams. Let's see real adversity for Cody. Not this fake bullshit. That is all I have. Great job, guys. <laughs> this man had me yelling at the top of my lungs about Cody Hill turns. Jeez, the only thing Cody doing is giving out weight belts. You know, what are we talking about? Hey, that matters, though. The kids love it. Does. It. it does. It does. <laughs> Bro, I saw a little black kid hop over the barricade and go hug Cody Rhodes and then start crying. Bro, when I see moments like that, it really resonates with me that you can't turn this guy hill, bro. Like, you can't. He means too much to the landscape. It's like LeBron James being a bad guy at this point in his career. Like, why? Why even embrace that? You you, you went through your whole career with no controversy. You might have took a picture with Diddy, but we're going to pretend like that don't exist. Why start doing controversial things now, bro? You're at the end of your career yeah. already. You clean. Yeah. Be clean. But We'll hey, see. Hey, and me, he was talking about it before we went live. Same quote from Dark Knight. You die and be a hero, or you live long enough to see yourself become a villain. So who knows? Who knows? The rock. Who knows? <laughs> rock. No. Rock picking up grapes with his booty. <laughs> We're not going to get into that again. Let's get into some fan chatter, bro. Let's get into some fan chatter. Do we got fan chatter music or like a sound effect or something? Just ba -da -ba. What would you like? I we got. I got some I don't know. Like? All right. Hold on. Let's try again. Get it. Let's on. do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get into some fan chatter. Ooh, I like that. Don DeMarco. <laughs> hey, this episode is fun. I like this. Look what we becoming, Cooley. We doing our thing. Wow. Look at us. Who would have thought? Not me. Don't you worry. So this first comment is from our boy, Obi. He always in our comments. Obi. You know you're my boy, E. You know, uh, I called him E. Like, uh, there's only one E almighty. Let's get that out the way. So Obi is Eric, but he, he, he a different E, okay? Okay? You can't be the real E. You the fake E. <laughs> Obi-Wan is cool said, y'all are correct about Triple Paul doing too damn much. If he made music, we'd hear him rapping on the SmackDown. <laughs> 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 Triple Paul is hilarious, by the way. <laughs> Triple Paul is hilarious, but saying Whoa. that if Triple H made music, we would hear him on the intro of SmackDown Facts. and Raw is hilarious. Facts. He might start <laughs> producing the music for the interests at this point, bro. Paul is wild, yo. <laughs> right. What would Paul. a Triple H song even sound like? What would he What would he rap about? <laughs> Probably would sound like Malibu's, uh, like a Malibu's Most Wanted type rap. I don't know, Classic man. movie, by the way. <laughs> That's the most underrated movie ever, dog. Malibu's yeah. Most Wanted. <laughs> Tay Diggs in that movie is so hilarious. <laughs> Give me a ride or I'll dust your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a ride or I'll dust your ass. You had the gun sideways. Oh, that was insane, man. Shout out to Balaboo's most one. And shout out to you, Obi. That was a funny comment. <laughs> that was hilarious. This other comment is from uh, Mr. Drifter. Ooh, I don't know how I feel about that name. Mr. Drifter. I don't like drifters. I don't like drifters. You better come correct. Mr. Drifter, and this is on our video where we were speaking about wrestling fans being embarrassed about being wrestling fans and not wanting to admit it. <laughs> Mr. Drifter says, yo, any female who watches baddies is a red flag. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, he going to get some, he going to get a lot of slack for that. <laughs> is that a TV show? What, or he just means. Oh, you don't know baddies? You don't know baddies? So Zeus. It's a, I think it's a you, you know, reality you know show. Zeus. Yeah, Zeus has a show called Baddies. It's a reality show. And the show is the concept of it is just a bunch of ratchet women live in one house and they fight each other every day. <laughs> That's the I concept. Gotta, the I might have to side with my boy, bro. Like, oh, what like, <laughs> come on, man. What I do they know. do on the show? Listen, I have no problem. They argue. With it, 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 hey, it's there's entertainment for everybody, right? Yeah. There's entertainment for everybody. I'm not yeah. saying what you shouldn't and should not like, but. <laughs> There are some things in the world that if you consume, they it's could a be a red flag about some <laughs> other things. It doesn't mean that it's 100% correct. Yeah. But right. it could mean those things because the thing you're watching is a little strange. 
Right. I mean, and that's all. Watch baddies. Hey, you can I, like I, it. I definitely you don't like that. But oh, I, I, <laughs> but I, I. But this is me never seeing the show, so I'm I'm right. I'm going to recoil at this point. So look, I definitely don't watch baddies. I have seen clips, and it's, it's not for me. It's definitely not for me. There, there's like a guy version of baddies too, where it's just like a bunch of gay guys in the house that's fighting ridiculous. each other. <laughs> Yeah, Zeus is a, bro, Zeus, we got to cancel Zeus, man. Get Zeus, Zeus is killing here. the black community. They need yeah, to like, what are we doing? Why network. every show got to be, be black people fighting in the house? Like, what, what is that? But, but, but I will say, I don't think it's a red flag if a girl is watching baddies. And I only say that because we watch a lot of wild shit, too. Like, we watch wrestling. And wrestling is pretty much just a controlled version of baddies. It's a bunch of guys. It's a, no, we need not company, doing that. Fighting each other back. <laughs> It, how is it not, though, bro? We just saw Bronson Reed and Braun Strowman tear the ring apart and beat up a bunch of security guards. That's the same thing that they watching on Baddies. It's just But real. it's, no, Baddies isn't scripted, though. Wrestling is scripted, so it's a fun thing no. to watch. Baddies no. is very toxic, and, you know, nine times out of ten, the woman is, who's watching it is actually like the women that they're watching. Not and really, though. I don't need I feel that like around there's me. Some... I don't Natalie think Nunn and Ray J, bro. That's <laughs> yeah, what that's you're out, bro. You're defending Come Natalie wow, Nunn. Bro. Listen, I don't have any problem with any of these people. Like, they're, hey, good for y'all. I hope it's working out. Make your money. But that's what you're defending, Quan. Like, you're I on the side to. with Ray yeah. J and Natalie Nunn. Just, Listen. just so we clear of where you stand in, in this debate right now. <laughs> Listen, I got to defend that's the sisters, crew. man. Look, if they watch, I, I'm just saying, watching that toxic show does not speak to the person that they are. Just because we all, we just got to accept the fact that humans like watching things that's detrimental. We like watching toxic things. We love to watch train crashes. Nah, man, I ain't doing it. You gotta have a clean soul around we me. We love baby. watching train crash, bro. Cooley, I, I, and I know you, Cooley. I know you. We we came yeah. up together. We we've been friends for a long yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. When Takashi Six Nine was on his run, oh yeah, I was the main. We one. were pay. We no. were paying attention to it. Yes. Why were we paying attention to it? Because it was great music. No, it wasn't. We was paying yes, attention it was. to the it. Beat it was was fire. a train crash, bro. The beat was fire. <laughs> yeah, look look at this man lying to you. The he beat lying was fire. Like, what? Look, I'm, I'm gonna tell the people at home. <laughs> We were paying attention to Takashi Six Nine's rise because we knew it was a train wreck just waiting to crash. We knew that at one point we were all in the chat just discussing when they were going to get him, and y'all know what I mean by that. We were just guessing when are people going to get Takashi Six Nine. That's the reason we paid attention to it. It was toxic. It was a train crash, but it was entertaining to see. So I think a lot of girls who watch baddies they just like the train crash stuff. But that don't mean that that's their personality. That don't mean they go out into the world and act like that. They just watch it on TV and then keep it moving. I don't act like the wrestlers I watch sometimes. <laughs> Bro, you be spitting promos every day. What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> this, your, your segment right, is a right. promo. <laughs> I'm going I'm, I'm to be honest with y'all. I'm just playing devil's advocate for the conversation. I think if you're watching baddies, you watch your goddamn mind. Why are you Quan, watching that? Oh, my God. Quan is the CM Punk of this podcast. I don't know. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> If Bro, I was a wrestler, what? my gimmick would be devil's advocate, where I would just try to, you know, just sp oh, spit whatever man. the contrary opinion is and see what it do, and then you know, nah, get the ball rolling. I ain't watching. Yeah, watching baddies watching is crazy. Baddies. I try to defend y'all, but watching baddies is crazy. That's a crazy show. That is an insane show. Girls in the house fighting. Are they even cute? I don't know. I ain't seen it. I'm never mm -hmm. going to see it. I'm cool. Anyway, that's all I got for comments, man. That's all I got for comments. Cooley, we are in Vince McMahon territory now, dog. It's out. It's out. We are going to be watching. I can't guarantee Cooley's going to see everything, but I'm going to watch all six episodes today. Matter of fact, as soon as we sign off of this podcast, I'm starting right now. I can't wait nah, to talk about it. Tomorrow. I got to go work out. <laughs> I got to go work out, and then I got to go make some food, and then I'm going to watch the episode, and we're going to see aight, aight. what they talking about. You know about what's funny, bro? Time. You know what's funny? AEW Grand Slam is today. I ain't Dang. even worried about Grand Slam. I'm focused on Vince McMahon. <laughs> And you know why? Because maybe WWE was in cahoots with Netflix, and they was like, we're going to drop this when Grand the Slam drops. That's foul, bro. That's foul. <laughs> Long-term long storytelling, baby. Right. But I will watch Grand Slam. I do want to see Nigel McGinnis versus Brian Danielson. Y'all know that match was made for me, so I'm definitely going to be tapped in. But uh, it's Vince McMahon Day tomorrow. I'm letting y'all know that right now. We might touch on AEW a little bit, but we are on Vince McMahon's ass. And until tomorrow... This is Wrestling with the Homies, your number one source for daily wrestling conversation. This was a wild and fun episode. I hope y'all have fun watching it. And we are out of here. Time to go watch Vince. Peace. Peace. Watch this. Watch this. That's my usher. That's my usher.